Hi everybody, um, this is just a redo of my old incubator video. Um, I've learned a couple tricks since the last one and I thought I'd share them just in case they're helpful to anybody. Um, these are the eggs that I'm assuming are infertile but I'm going to incubate them anyway. I incubate all eggs even if they are infertile. Uh, I've had some of the nastiest looking eggs hatch out anyway so it's a good idea to be prepared. Um, one of the tricks I learned since last time is that you want to use a bigger rather than a smaller box. Um, just having larger area helps to regulate the temperatures and the humidity even inside a box. So um, look for something that's maybe about this size or bigger, like a shoebox size, that'd work. I like this size because it fits easily on some of my shelving units. Um, the white stuff is perlite, just like what I used in the last video. Perlite you can get at a lot of home improvement stores in their garden section. I've seen it even at Walmart. Uh, I like to, I got this at my local plant nursery. You got to look out for the stuff that doesn't have any um, fertilizer or any kind of pesticides in it. You don't want that. All you want is straight perlite and it says right on the back that it, all that it contains is perlite so that's all you want um, so I just filled that nearly to the top it's got enough room inside of it and I like this container because it has a kind of see-through lid so I don't even have to open it up to see if anybody's hatched I can just look straight through the top um, but you just want enough room so that any small lizards will hatch out and be able to walk around a little bit. Um, you don't want to use perlite just dry. So I'm going to pour it into this big old bowl here. It's really dusty when it first starts out, comes out of the bag. So um, putting some water in it will help that and it helps bring up the moisture. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Like I said, really dusty. Um, you're just going to pour that water in there till it's all wet and kind of sticky. Seems like enough. And you're going to take the perlite and you're going to squeeze it back out until it's not dripping anymore and it'll form kind of like a little snowball there and you'll just do that repeatedly and fill your incubator with the stuff you want to squeeze it out thanks telephone put it in there All right, so um, I've filled up the incubator with perlite that is now moist, kind of sticks together. It's not super damp though, it's still kind of fluffy and that's the way you want it. You don't want it too um, wet. And when you're getting ready to place the eggs into the incubator, um, you'll just want to use your fingers to make maybe a little dent for them to go into. Um, now these eggs, like I said, they have some issues and they're stuck together, which is something you don't usually see with crusted gecko eggs. But um, you can make a mark with a pencil. I'll just do a little X here. And that helps you keep the top side up. You kind of want to keep, you know, the, um, the side you found facing upwards when you first found them, you kind of want to uh, leave it that way when you're incubating them. So I'm just going to put them right in there. You lay them flat. You can push the perlite around them a little bit. And I put them in the corner here because that just leaves a lot of room for any other eggs that are going to come. Um, And one thing I did do, I've got an X here, 
and an X here, and that just helps me put the lid on the same way every single time. Because what I've liked to do in the past, take a piece of scotch tape, put it right over the eggs, and then right on that, I can write um, the parent's name, that's burrito, and um, the date. The date I found them was the 19th. And you can line up a bunch of eggs that way. It saves you, um, you know, in materials and all that. Some people will just um, put one pair of eggs in a container like this, and I prefer to just, you know, not waste a lot of materials. Um, eggs are usually, in my house, they're laid far enough apart that they don't get mixed up if the babies hatch out. Um, and with this container, there are no holes anywhere. It's completely airtight or as airtight as a Ziploc container can get. So once a week, I just let some fresh air in. Um, maybe let it sit open for a couple minutes. And I just lock it back down. Um, and I'll keep it on a shelf somewhere that's pretty quiet. And crusted gecko eggs are good to be incubated at the same temperature that the animals themselves live. Um, so probably not too much colder than 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And really don't want to go too much over about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the higher your temps, the shorter the incubation time. And I've found that usually the shorter incubated animals will hatch out a little bit scrawnier. Um, so I like to give them a lot of time inside the egg so I keep my temps a little bit lower.